We want to talk about it now with Will Charlesworth. He's a media partner at Keystone Law. And Will, you're very good to join us this afternoon. How are you doing? Good afternoon, Peter. I'm very well, thank you. And thank you very much for uh, having me on your show. I want to take you through a few different scenarios, Will, because obviously, as has been made very clear, as we've seen from that clip there, Russell Brand denies all the allegations against him. They are extremely serious. There are more of them today. We've had a leading domestic abuse charity ending its ties with him. We've seen his literary agency, Tavistock Wood, saying it's terminated all professional ties to Brand. You deal with this stuff all the time, both with businesses and celebrities and various people. I mean, let's say for the sake of argument that all of this is nonsense. Can Russell Brand's reputation ever recover? Um, I think that's going to be uh, potentially extremely uh, difficult. So there are two sides to this. So there's the legal side of it, where we can look at a claim for uh, defamation um, against anybody that says uh, an untrue statement, uh, which uh, causes or is likely to cause serious harm to someone's uh, reputation. Um, however, the way that uh, Russell Brand has chosen to deal with this is by uh, is through a, a media um, and, and PR campaign. Um, and whilst a legal action or legal actions uh, may ensue, um, I suspect that he will choose to fight this as a as a PR battle. Now, um, I can't say whether his reputation is going to be recovered or not. Um, I understand that he has a lot of support um, from his millions um, of followers, or some, or a percentage of those millions of followers, um, and um, I suspect it may be very difficult uh, for them to to believe um, otherwise um, uh, in in terms of that. Um, if of course there's nothing in these allegations um, whatsoever, it can still be it can still be very difficult to recover um, that reputation. Um, in some cases, bringing a legal action uh, might be the only way to be satisfied that you've been vindicated, um, at least through the courts, anyway. Yeah, it's interesting because, of course, we don't know whether these allegations are true or not. He denies them. There may well be court actions in, in future, but there aren't at the moment. So we can discuss them a little bit within the law, of course, and we need to be careful about that. Um, and, I, and, and I know you of all people will, will be because you do it for a living. What about the broadcasters here? What about Channel 4, the BBC, uh, the Baranjay, the, um, the production company that made some of the programmes? There's a sort of slightly weird thing in the Dispatches documentary, I watched it over the weekend, where they were saying, you know, we Dispatches asked the Channel 4 for a comment, yet they're broadcasting on Channel 4. Um, we're hearing a lot of stuff about culture. I've seen it, some, some of it anyway, not all of it, certainly not anything as serious as uh, Russell Brand, but certainly you hear allegations about people all the time. You don't know whether it's rumour, you don't know whether it's true or not. But, I mean, is this endemic to the entertainment news industry, do you think? Or is that was this isolated? Um, I mean, I can't say whether it's isolated or not. I suspect that we all um, see online um, uh, similar rumours um, and allegations. And the nature of social media is that it allows people to be anonymous. So uh, whilst on the one hand that can be very productive for uh, whistleblowing and not everybody wants to be named and people certainly in that dispatches wanted to remain, um, wanted to remain anonymous, um, uh, it can be... Yeah, I can't say whether it, it's not isolated. I don't think to the to the uh, media uh, world uh, in particular, and um, uh, certainly um, I've uh, acted for numerous uh, people, both uh, on the corporate side um, and in media as well. Um, and um, uh, whenever there are interests um, to be protected or important figures to be protected, um, somehow they will generally find that that. Um, that protection, unfortunately. Yeah, and that protection is something that people do worry about. It's something that people are often reluctant to come forward to actually say something. And we have these women's testaments, testimony is in the public domain. It is, um, certainly their names aren't in the public domain. They're anonymised, yet Russell Brand isn't anonymised. We know that they're all against him. Do you think that's fair in law, that someone who's accused of these very, very serious allegations, which he denies, uh, that they, their reputation can be trashed? I mean, it might be true, but it might not be true at the same time. No, um, and, it, and it's a very difficult question. Um, and there's, there's always, there always has to be a balance of um, uh, fairness um, uh, in, these, in these situations. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, I mean, a quirk of defamation is that um, in order uh, for 
the people who've made the allegations so they can be identified um they have to actually prove that what they've said is true um it's assumed that um a, a statement which causes serious harm um, is is untrue. It's defamatory. So unfortunately, the obligation is on um, is on those those victims um, primarily. There are certain other uh, uh, and the media organisations to to prove to prove this. Um, yes. I mean, what, what do you think happens now? Because no doubt we'll hear more allegations probably in the next couple of days. This was a joint investiga investigation between dispatches, the Sunday Times on the Times. So I, I would expect the Times, which I should be totally clear, is owned by the same company that owns Talk TV. I expect there'll be more allegations tomorrow and maybe over the next few days. But what happens in the sort of medium term, do you think, Will? What, what, what can happen, both from brands' perspective and from the media organisation's perspective? I think in terms of uh, a brand's perspective, um, as I say, I suspect it's going to be more of a PR um, focus. I think he will be with his legal advisors carefully poring over the evidence in that documentary and anything else that he's been made aware of that we're certainly not aware of at the moment. And you're right, it's likely that in these type of stories, um, there will be further information and further allegations um, that come out of it. Um, I expect that the Times and the other uh, media organisations, um, they've spent, as I understand it, over a year That's right. investing yeah. this carefully. Um, and whilst they could look, you know, whilst they can say, well, there's obviously a public interest from their point of view, they're going to argue, um, uh, in publishing this, they have an obligation and press regulations say that they must um, investigate this thoroughly and have as much information as possible. So um, I suspect that all parties will be carefully monitoring how this proceeds. Um, and um, even if Russell Brand were to um, start taking, bringing legal action, that's certainly not instantaneous, that's not immediate. Um, uh, you, for example, you generally can't get an injunction to stop somebody saying something um, defamatory um, in the future. There's a public interest argument that, that's, um, that you have a freedom of speech. Um, all he could do if he wants to take action is to threaten you know, legal action against yes, the... Yes. People have made those statements and also... But, the, but the, reputationally, the, at the moment, of worry to do that, that would look terrible as well. It would do. It would be extremely negative. And if I were, uh, uh, if I were advising him, um, as much as it may be in my interest as a lawyer to bring legal action, um, I'd certainly say that's more likely to have a negative impact uh, uh, than, a, uh, than certainly um, a positive one. It should okay. be of a, a last resort. OK, Will, thank you very much indeed. That's Will Charlesworth there. He's a media partner at Keystone Law. What do you think about Will? About what, what Will was saying there? What do you make of where this goes next? What your thoughts are on the Russell Brand allegations? And they are allegations, which he denies. We've got statements, of course, from Channel 4 BBC and uh, Banerjee, who, which owns Endemol Production. That was the company behind Big Brother. We'll read those out a little bit later on, just give the full perspective on this. Thanks.